Well, hey, so glad that you're with us today at Life Center. I have to clarify that last slide you just saw with the little moving building. Somebody came up to me earlier today and was like, what's up with the three different buildings? And I said, well, Life Center is one church, multiple locations. So you saw the central campus building on there, but we also have our North Tacoma campus, which meets on 35th and Mullen up in the Ruston area. And then we also have a campus that we call our Rainier campus down on 176th in the Fredrickson area, and that is a collection of what you're a part of. So when you show up at the Central Campus, understand you're a part of something bigger than just this place. You're a part of something that God is doing across Pierce County, and we're so glad that you're with us. Hey, today we begin a brand new series over the next number of weeks entitled Grow. Can you say grow? Grow. Grow. If you're taking notes, I would love for you to write this title down, The Conditions of Growth. I want to talk about the conditions of growth over the next few minutes. And we are going to go to John chapter 15. A little over six years ago, I went out and I purchased something from my backyard. It was an apple tree. But at that point, it was about this tall. And I remember taking this apple tree home. I was so excited because it had all these different graphs of different types of apples in this apple tree. And it included God's favorite kind of apples, which are Fuji's, just in case you're wondering. (laughs) Can I get an amen? (laughs) Fuji's are the best, by the way. And I I was so excited. I remember digging the hole, prepping the spot, and and getting ready and planting the tree in my backyard. This is six years ago. And I'm thinking to myself, man, next summer those apples are going to be so good. (laughs) And there was, like, no apples the next summer. There there was a couple little, like, they looked kind of like miniature apples, but you, you would not want to eat them. I said, okay, well, it just needs another year to go. And so another year passed, and I was like, okay, more fruit. Here we go. It's going to get bigger. And, and the tree got taller, but the apples still weren't that great. And I, I remember in this moment, you know, being aware that apple trees, they, they need a number of things. Apple trees need water. Apple trees need sun. But they also need this thing called pruning. But I remember looking at that precious little tree and going, well, I don't, I don't want to prune it until it actually gets big enough to have some fruit. Then I'll begin to, to prune it, not really understanding how it works. And what I didn't realize was I was actually not helping the fruit situation. The tree kept getting taller and taller. The branches were long and skinny and But I couldn't figure out why is the fruit not coming in like like I want it to come in. I want a Fuji apple from my backyard. I want to like have that pride like I did that even though I didn't do it. I I did that. And what I realized, I, I had a conversation with a friend. He said, Tyler, the problem is you're not pruning. You're not actually cutting the tree back. And I was like, well, I don't want to cut the tree back. I don't want to ruin the tree. I just planted this tree. I love this tree. I'm I'm waiting for it to to show the fruit. And he goes, no, no, no. You, You have the order wrong. And then he said this to me. He said, cut back more than you think you should. And I remember the day that I finally got up the courage to walk into my backyard with my pruning shears. I was looking at the branches, and I was like, okay, cut back more than I think I should. I, I don't know. I don't want to mess this up. I, I don't want, like, Amber to walk into the backyard and look at me and go, what did you do? But here's what I did. I, I cut back more than I thought I should. And something amazing happened. The very next year, that tree looked bigger, stronger, healthier, than it had ever been. And guess what also happened? There was more fruit than I ever would have expected. You see, the problem was was this. All of the energy, all of the nutrients, all of the life were going to different areas of the tree that weren't actually going to bring a return in fruit. And until you cut things back, until you prune things back, 
I'm going to be lacking the very things that I, I want. You see, in a very counterintuitive way, it was in the cutting back that was going to lead to greater fruit. See, I learned in my backyard that day, some branches needed to go. Other branches needed to lose some length on them. Why? So that the connected branches would thrive. And as we begin this new year, as we look ahead for the next 21 days of 21 days of prayer and fasting, or as you just look at 2023 in front of you, can I have you ask this question of yourself for a moment? Where do I want to grow? Where does God want you to grow? What is it in your life that, that he actually wants to cultivate and develop? Because here's something important that we all need to understand. God has a commitment. And what is God's commitment to you? Your growth. Do you know that God is committed to your growth more than you are even committed to your comfort? God wants you to grow. God is committed that we would grow as Life Center, but let, capture this, Life Center will never grow until the people of Life Center grow. You see, the, the, the greatest challenge for us is, is if somehow God would grow this church numerically, but he would not grow us in our depth spiritually, we would be in trouble. God wants to grow us deeper, but he also wants us to take some new territory and expand. God has a commitment your growth, but don't miss this. Growth has a condition. And what's the condition of growth? Connection to Jesus. Connection to Jesus. You see, the conditions that, that are going to lead to greater fruitfulness in your life and greater fruitfulness and, and growth in your life with God, understand, it cannot happen disconnected from Jesus. God wants you to grow. He desires fruit in your life. But I know we throw those things around, and, and let's be honest, that sounds very like churchy language, right? Because what does that even mean? Oh, God's just taking me through a growing season. What does that mean? Like you're getting taller, you're getting wider. Like what, what's growing? What does that look like? What, what are we talking about when God desires us to grow and God wants fruitfulness in our lives? Well, I think it comes down to this. Ultimately, God is committed to making us look more like Jesus. So a year from now, do I look more like Jesus or do I still look a lot like Tyler? Now, I'm not talking about growing a beard, okay? I'm, I'm talking about, like, does the character, the evidence, the, the fruit, is it on display? Does it look like Jesus? See, this is important because Yesterday, I went out in my backyard to my beloved apple tree, and I cut some branches off. Found some branches that were, they were growing, and they, they were kind of growing back into the center of the tree, which you want to cut those branches off because they'll block the sun from getting into where the tree needs that sun to, in order to thrive. And So I, I snipped some things away, and, and yet here's what I know. Is, isn't this a beautiful branch? Come on. Isn't this a beautiful branch? Some of you are like, wow, Tyler, I've never seen an apple tree branch. It's because it's my apple tree. It's, it's beautiful. But here's what we need to understand. This branch is nothing without the tree. You see, this branch, now that I've cut it off, it's not all of a sudden going to be like, wow, just wait for these apples to pop out in about three weeks. It's not going to happen. This, this branch actually will not be able to accomplish what it's designed to do now that it's disconnected. But here's the amazing thing. The tree is going to be able to do what it's designed to do because we got rid of some of the excess. See, the point is this. Living connected to Jesus, for you, for me, living connected to Jesus is not only possible, it's critical. It's critical. And yet, I've seen so many people who settle for trying to show up once a week or maybe once every three weeks. And as, as a branch, they try to plug into Jesus for like 60, 65 minutes, if Tyler's going long. They're like, okay, give me all the Jesus nutrients I need 
to live a fruitful, abundant, growing life. 65 minutes, go, 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 go. All right, see you in a couple weeks. Now the truth is I could take this branch home and try to like tape it back on where I cut it off. It's not gonna be very effective if I leave it there for 65 minutes and say, okay, see you next week or two weeks from now. And so the point is this, what if we want 2023 to be a year of growth and fruitfulness in our journey with Jesus, it has to have the right environment. It has to have the right conditions. It has to have the right connection. And I'm here to remind us that connection with Jesus like that every single day, it's not only possible, but understand, it is critical. It's critical. Look with me to Jesus' words in, in John chapter 15. We're going to look at the first three verses today. Jesus, this is in the midst of his teaching in what's often called the upper room discourse. John chapter 13 through 16, Jesus, it's the night that he's going to be betrayed. He's sharing with his disciples some of his closing thoughts, his parting moments, some wisdom for them, preparing them for what's ahead as he is about to go to the cross. He's going to die, but he will rise again. And in John 15, it says this, I am the true vine. Can you say true vine? What's important is most scholars think that Jesus is now, they've left the upper room, they're journeying out to the garden, they're walking through Jerusalem, the temple would be in the background where at the temple you would see a massive vine with clusters of grapes made out of gold that reminded the people of what one of the Old Testament prophets in Isaiah said about God's people Israel, that they were God's vine, they were God's vineyard, and yet they were wild grapes. They returned to, a, uh, to God, not what he was wanting or expecting. So God brought correction. Jesus here in that backdrop says this, that he's not a vine, he is the true vine. In other words, he's the fulfillment. He's everything that the people of Israel couldn't be and wouldn't be by themselves. He is the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes. And he prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit. Can you say more fruit? You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Now, again, I, th I think it's important to note, Jesus doesn't say that he's a vine. He says, this is his final seventh I am statement in the Gospel of John. He says that I am the true vine. I'm the true vine. And not only that, listen, disciples who are branches, they, they have a role, they have a purpose, and what is that? It's to bear fruit. God has a commitment. He wants you to grow. He wants you to bear fruit. Yet Jesus says something important. The, the branches that, that are fruitless, they're removed. And the branches that are fruitful are pruned so they'll actually produce more fruit. See, today, I, I think it's important for us to recognize that connection with Jesus it brings life. But the evidence of that life is fruit. You want to know how to experience life? You want to experience life to the full? You cannot have it without connection with Jesus. And as hard as we try, what, man, okay, I'm, I'm going to go all in with God this year, but, but even if you came the next 52 Sundays straight, one hour a week isn't enough, friends. We're going to do everything we can to try to create an environment, an atmosphere where you can connect with Jesus, where you encounter the Holy Spirit, where your life is built up, your faith is built up. But if you plug in for an hour on a Sunday and then disconnect the rest of the week, 
The end result a year from now will not be more growth or more fruit. We have to figure out, how do we remain in him? Why? Because I believe connection with Jesus is the only way to experience life. But evidence that you have life is fruit. You see, in the Pacific Northwest, we have trees, amen? Have you noticed this? There's, there's no lack of trees around you. And what I know about trees, trees have branches, and what grows out of the branches is how you know the nature of that tree. And so a pine tree, out of its branches comes what? Pine needle. How many of you, you've spent way too much time the last few months cleaning up pine needles? It's, it's what grows out. You know it's a pine tree. Why? Because it has pine needles. You know it's a maple tree if it has maple leaves. You know it's an apple tree because eventually... Apples should grow from it, amen? You should know that. You see, your life and my life are no different. You know the nature of your life by what's growing out of it. And so can I ask, what, what's growing out of your life? Is it looking like, is it, is it fruit of, is it evidence of being connected to Jesus? Because here's the good news. Today, all of us, we have a fresh start opportunity in front of us. We can choose connection with God. We can put our trust in him. You see, a lack of fruit is first and foremost always a connection issue. When we lack fruit in our lives, when the fruit isn't growing like we think it should or, or there's something going on, we need to stop and check the connection because if the connection is right, fruit should happen. Branches are dependent on the vine for their continual life. So understand this, when you come to Jesus, you're not just adding a little Jesus to your calendar. When you put your trust in Jesus, you're not just adding a little bit of like a, a Jesus area in your life. No, when we come to Jesus, we are actually tapping into the source who is himself life. So we're not adding a little bit of him to our lives. See, the reality is without him, we don't have life. Amen. I've said this quote before. I love it. You'll probably hear me say it again at some point. But it simply says this. Christianity is not about making bad people good. Christianity is about making dead people live. You see, without Christ, disconnected from Christ, this disconnected from the tree, this branch can do nothing on its own except wither up and die. But if we can figure out a way to, to get it connected, then life begins to flow in it and through it, and the evidence that it is alive is what? It's interesting, if, if the connection's right, you'll never see or hear a branch or a vine straining or stressing to produce fruit. Amber and I, we, we lived in Yakima for a while. There's no lack of apple orchards in Yakima. And when we lived there, I was doing a lot of cycling. I remember riding my bike past these apple orchards. And what, what's interesting, I never heard this sound coming from an apple orchard. I never heard apple trees stressing to produce apples. See, the branches just simply receive what the tree is giving it. And the branch, it's in their nature to produce Fruit, come on, if you're a disciple, it's in your new nature to produce fruit. But why is it that I've had so many conversations with Christians who live a faith that sounds a little bit like this? <gasps> Can you imagine walking past an apple orchard and <gasps> bloop? Oh, apple. <laughs> That'd be so messed up, wouldn't it? I'd be like, what is going on around here? And yet, how many times have we approached our journey with Jesus and we're like, I just gotta be more faithful. Bloop. 
It showed up Sunday. Yes. Life naturally flows from connection. And if life is there, it will be evidenced with fruit. But don't miss the second part. Because Jesus, in verse 2, he, he says this. There's branches that are fruitless, and they're going to be removed. I'm, I'm going to look at that Greek word in just a second, because there's an interesting idea tied in there. But, but branches that are fruitless are going to be removed. Branches that are fruitful are going to be pruned so that they produce more fruit. Tyler, what's the point? Well, the point is this. Both fruitless and fruitful branches ultimately have a common experience. What is that? Cutting. But Tyler, I don't like to be cut. Yep. Neither do I. You see, if you're going to be a branch, guess what you're going to experience? If these were sharp. <laughs> there we go. See, God had a lot of work to do on that one right there. You see, if, if you're fruitless, there's cutting. But guess what? If you're fruitful, there's cutting. And I don't know about you, there's been so many times in my life where, where I sense the expert gardener coming at me with some shears and I'm like, no! God's going, hey, hey, that attitude, come on, we, we, need, to, we need to sniff that out. Why? Because it's not helping you be fruitful. And I'm like, don't touch that one. Cut that one over there that I don't care about. No, no, God, you don't, you don't get it. You don't see what I see. And the expert gardener's going, really? Like, you as the branch? I know nobody else has discussions like this with God. I'm just letting you into my world so you know how to pray for me later on. But <laughs> I see those sharp shears coming at me, and I'm like, wait, we're on the same page. We're on the same team. God, don't you love me? And he goes, yeah, I do. But God, that doesn't feel like love. It is. Let's, Tyler, let, let's deal with this attitude right there. Let's deal with the tone that you talk to that person with right, right there. Let's, let's deal with, with your money, Tyler. How dare you go there, Tyler? Let's, let's deal with how you talk online for a second to people that you don't actually know. See, all of a sudden, what, what's God doing? He, he's cutting back things that are, are drawing away resource that's keeping us from being as fruitful as we can be. It's actually in the cutting back that's going to lead to greater growth. But let's be honest, none of us like when the shears show up in our lives. We, we can see all the other dead branches in everybody else's life, right? God, you need to prune that attitude out of them. My goodness, I'm going to add that to my prayer list. Come on, some of us are really good at that, aren't we? Like, hey, God, come here. Um, you got those shears? Because my spouse needs some stuff cut. God, my children, just like, just cut it down to the nub. God, my children, just like, <laughs> mow it down, mow it down. But then the shears come towards me, and I'm like, no! Like, just turning away. Don't, no, don't. But understand, if, if I want to grow this year, then God might prune some stuff. If I want to experience greater fruitfulness, some stuff might need to be cut back. See, friends, understand, what is Jesus describing? He's describing a picture of discipleship. Who are the branches? The branches are disciples of Jesus. Who's the vine? The vine is not me. The vine is not you. It's Jesus. 
A lot of times we want Jesus to be like a branch out of our vine, but understand we are not the vine, he is. Jesus isn't just an attachment out of our lives. He's the source, he's the life. But don't miss this, the gardener is God our Father. And he's an expert gardener. He sees what we can't see. He actually can see into the future and say, I'm going to snip this back to here. Why? Because a few years from now, you'll see why. But sometimes as the branch, I'm like, no, I like that part of my life. I, I don't want that to go away. I, don't touch that thing. God goes, no, no, no. Trust me. Trust me. See, what does God want for your life? He wants both faithfulness and fruitfulness. He wants you to be faithful. And here's what I know. There, there's some branches on my apple tree in my backyard. And guess what? They're faithful. They're connected. They, they show up every single day, whether I want them to or not. They're faithful. But the problem is some of them, they aren't fruitful. And and there's some stuff that's got to be removed from that specific branch. Why? So that the actual branch that's connected to the arm of the tree, it can actually produce the fruit that it's designed to produce. God wants both faithfulness and fruitfulness. Why? Well, later on in verse 8, Jesus says this, that my Father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. See, fruit isn't for us to brag. The branch can't brag, look at my apples, look at my apples. All the branch did was hang out and connect into the tree. All the branch did in the vine was hang out and connect into the vine. It, it wasn't the, the source of it, it simply did what a branch is supposed to do. It doesn't get the glory. No, in fact, it's the gardener, the, the master vine dresser, God our Father, who, who gets the glory. Why? Because he shapes us in the way that he wants us to grow. And as we produce fruit, it doesn't bring us glory, it brings, us, brings him glory. See, growth, if you want to grow this next year, <laughs> it's going to involve some cutting. Well, Tyler, I don't want that. That's, that's okay. It's okay. But don't expect to get to the end of this year and look back and then ask yourself, well, why didn't I grow? I'm so glad I didn't oil these, by the way, because <laughs> it makes it so much better, doesn't it? Like, some of you guys are going to wake up with nightmares, like with Tyler going... Growth involves cutting, but don't miss this. Growth brings glory to God. See, when, when we grow Life Center, it brings glory to God. When you grow, you begin to bear fruit, it brings glory to God. See, this is a challenge for us though, because if, if it involves cutting, it, it grates against our, the dominant American mindset, which is what? Bigger is better. More, more, more. So much like me, when, when I first planted that tree in my backyard, I was like, no, 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 I want it to get big enough to where there's fruit and, and then I'll begin to prune it. No, no, no. We have to recognize that in the kingdom of God, bigger isn't better, better is better. See, often the kingdom of God functions a little bit upside down and inside out of how we expect. You see, Jesus said, you want to be great, serve. You want to be blessed, Give. You want greater fruitfulness? Prune. See, sometimes the key to our forward growth is God's faithful cutting back. But that's hard. Because most of us, we set up life where, where it's comfortable and we don't want any changes or adjustments. But, but there's cutting whether you are fruitless or fruitful. You can't avoid cutting. What I love about the original Greek word, though, where, where Jesus, he says this in verse 2. He says, every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes, removes. That word in the Greek also can be used 
to lift up. Removes from, from the dirt. You see there's branches on a vine that will fall into the dirt. They're not getting the sun. And just like an expert gardener can come along and pick that up and clean that branch off and put it back in its proper place, I believe God can do the same thing. See, I think there's, there's two different realities going on in, in what Jesus is teaching us here. See, there's some branches that have the appearance of being connected, but when you look closer, you realize that branch is dead. It's not connected. It's got to get out of here. But there's other branches that are still in him. They've fallen down. And what does he do? The expert vine dresser knows how to come along and lift them up. Lift them up. You might, you might be in a fruitful season. Here's what I believe. If you are in Christ, God wants to lift you up. He's not interested in just casting you out. So let him lift you up, let him clean you up. Let him get you back into a place so that you can be more fruitful. Friends, those who, who are producing fruit in your life, when the shears come towards you, don't fight it because he sees what you don't see. Allow him to cut back what needs to be cut back. You see, none of us like the cutting process, but pruning allows growth to happen in the right direction with the right resources that will create the greatest results. That's why I think moments like 21 days of prayer and fasting are so important. Because over the next 21 days, some of you, you're gonna lean in and, and you're gonna begin to grow because the connection is getting strengthened. But what you're going to begin to hear in those 21 days as the Spirit of God begins to speak to you, you're gonna hear the sound of those shears coming at you. And all of a sudden, you've given God access and you're saying, okay, you wanna grow this year? I want you to grow. I'm committed to your growth. So let's start with the way that you talk to your spouse. Well, God, I mean, you, you see how they talk to me. I mean, why don't you go trim them? No, let's trim you. Let's trim you. Let's trim your use of sign language on I-5 in traffic, okay? Because that's not helpful with the Jesus sticker on the back of your car anyway, so. Let's, let's, let's trim your priorities, how you're spending your time. You, you say that you don't have time for me, but man, you got time for Instagram. Too soon? I love you. Where is it that, that God wants to trim some things back so that we can actually live the fruitful, growing lives that that he desires and will bring him glory. You see, this is why 21 days of prayer is so important because it puts us in a place where we allow the master gardener to, to come near. See, prayer and fasting is not about you trying to twist God's arm to get him to do something for you. Prayer and fasting ultimately is breaking some stuff in our lives so that we get in alignment to see what God wants us to see. And it gets us in a place where he has access to do what he desires to do. And so, where does God want you to grow in 2023? Are you ready for it? Because even if you're in a fruitless season or maybe you're in a fruitful season, we have a common experience in front of us. Cutting. God wants to cut some things back not to harm you. See, this is what I love about the expert gardener. He never comes at you with shears to harm or to hinder you. It's always for your benefit, for your fruitfulness, for your growth. Today, can I invite you to bow your heads with me for a moment all across this room? First, I wanna I want give an opportunity for those of us who recognize, man, second Sunday of 2023, and Tyler, I, I need to start by fixing my connection with Jesus. Maybe you feel distant from God. Maybe you've never put your trust in what Jesus has done for you. Here's what I love. By putting your trust in him, you can know that you are a new creation. Your sin, your shame, that separation, it's dealt with. And so today, across this room, if you're here and you say, you know what, I... I want that connection with Jesus. I wanna say yes to him today. I wanna to put my trust in what he's done for me. If that's you, would you just simply raise a hand, just hold it up for a moment, say, yeah, that's me, Tyler. Pray for me today, yeah, yeah, thank you. Others, yeah, 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 yeah. You can put those hands down. Second, I wanna pray for those of us 
who would say, hey, it's 2023, I'm ready to grow and I'm going to embrace the conditions for growth. What does that mean? Well, I'm gonna focus in on my connection with Jesus, but also I'm gonna embrace the wisdom of the master gardener to cut away what needs to go. You want this year to be a year of growth. You wanna take some new ground in your walk with Jesus. You're ready to embrace that. If that's you, would you just raise a hand for a moment? Say, yeah, that's me, that's me, that's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, I thank you for every individual in this place. God, it's not by chance or coincidence that they're here today. And I pray that as we respond to what your spirit is speaking to us through the scriptures, as we consider how we wanna lean into allowing you to help us grow, I pray that we would embrace growth this next year. Lord, that we would lean into daily connection with you, but also we would lean into the wisdom of the expert gardener who knows how to get the most fruit in and through our lives. So God, would you do that? Thank you for friends who raised a hand saying, hey, this year, God, I, I wanna grow. This year, I give you space to come in and to prune and cut away what needs to be pruned and cut away. I, I give you space to, to correct and direct what needs to be corrected and directed in my life. God, I want to bear fruit. I want to grow. And as well, I pray for those who raise their hands saying that today they're ready to start a new connection with Jesus. Lord, I thank you that that moment of decision, scripture says we are a new creation. So today, Life Center, can we pray this prayer with those who raise their hands saying that they're ready to start that relationship with Jesus? Would you say these words? Say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. I put my trust in you. Forgive me of my sin. Make me a new creation. Help me to follow you every day of my life. It's in your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Can we celebrate those who are making that decision today?